Welcome back. So we have been looking at the Ramsey problem and how to solve the Ramsey problem using graph theory. So to recap, so what does the Ramsey problem say? So given two natural numbers P and Q, we define the Ramsey number RPQ as the smallest integer n so that among n people there exist either P of them who know each other or Q of them who don't know each other. The idea, idea is to prove that R P plus 1 Q plus 1 is less than R P Q plus 1 plus R P plus 1 Q. And using this recurrence to prove that R P Q is less than or equal to P plus Q minus 2 choose P minus 1. Now, this second one is something that we have already done in our um, couple of weeks ago when we did induction on, on multiple variables. So, in this video, we would like to just prove this first, the recurrence, this recurrence. Now, to solve this first recurrence, we would of course first try to understand this problem using graph theory. So let's see how do we model it in graph theory. We did it in last video. Let us quickly recap. So to recap, first of all, we have the graphs, which is a set of vertices, a set of edges, and this is what the graph is given as the set of vertices and set of edges. Now, if the relation between vertices is symmetric that means if uv is in a then vu is in a we call it an undirected graph we can also have weights assigned to edges and if there is an edge from u to v then we say that v is a neighbor of u and in an undirected graph the degree of v is the total number of neighbors of v so pictorially this is the set of vertices the edges are drawn using lines joining the vertices. There can be weights on the edges and there can be direction on the edges to represent the un unsymmetric version of the edges. Right? In the last video, we also looked at some other properties or some other definitions on graph theory. In particular, we looked at the independent set and click. So what is an independent set? So an independent set is a set of vertex, vertices such that no two vertex in the set has an edge between them. And a clique is just the opposite of it. Namely, a clique is a set of vertex, set of vertices such that between any pair of this set in the set there is an edge. Right? So for example, if this is the graph that we have. A and E is an independent set. There is no A between them. Similarly, B, C and G is also an independent set because there is again no A between D and C, C and G and G and D. Right? Now, as a clique, we can have A D, B is a clique because there is an edge between any two of them. Similarly, we can have A, D, B, E is a clique. Now, if we have an edge between A and E, then in that case, A, B, C, A, B, D and E would have been a clique also because between any pair of between A, D, B and E, there is an edge. Right? So, we have an understanding of what is an independent set is and what is a clique is. Now, using these two no notions, we can now visualize this problem. To visualize it, we have to understand what does it mean and we have to first of all create a graph. So, namely, let the people B 
Pn vertices, V1 to Vn. And so this is the first thing is to try to understand what does the R PQ imply. Right? We draw an edge between the vertex Vi and Vk if the person Vi knows person Vj. Now since person Vi knows person Vj implies person Vj knows person Vi, so the graph is an undirected graph because this relationship is symmetric. And what are we looking at? We want to find something like P people who know each other. So P people who know each other, meaning there are P vertices such that between any two vertex there is a edge. So that means there is a clique of size P. And similarly, if I am looking for Q people who don't know each other, or in other words, there are Q vertices such that between any two pairs, any pair of vertices in this set, there is no edge. So we get Q independent set. So if this is how we look at it, the definition of RPQ becomes RPQ is the smallest integer n such that the following can be told. Any graph on at least n vertices has either a clique of size p or an independent set of size q. So this is how we would like to define R p q. And what do we have to prove? So we note that R p comma one equals to R one comma p, which is equal to one, because if you are given one vertex just then there exists one independent set, so which is R P1, and there is also one click, so it's R1 Q. So this note is easy to see. And we have to prove that R P plus 1 Q plus 1 is less than R P Q plus 1 and R P plus 1 Q. Right? Now how will we prove it? The hint is we will give a direct proof of it. So let's try to understand what we have to prove first. So this is the definition that we have. RPQ is the smallest integer n such that the following statement can be told. Any graph on at least n vertex either has a click of size p or an independent set of size. Q. Then we want to prove that this relation holds. So we, what we will show is that given a set, given a graph on n, sorry, this should be n vertices. Given a, any graph on n vertices where n is bigger than this rpq plus 1 and rp plus 1 q then there is either a clique of size p plus 1 or an independent set of size q plus 1. Now why is this sufficient? So if we prove this one, this statement, what do we end up proving? We are proving that the smallest n, the rpq is less than or equal to this plus rpq plus 1 plus rp plus 1q which is exactly what we have to prove right so what we prove is that if i give you a set uh, a graph any graph with more than n vertices but n is bigger than rpq plus 1 and rp plus 1q then there is a unique uh, there is either a clique of size p plus 1 or a independent set of size q right so this is what is required to prove
So to prove this, let's start with a graph on n vertices where the n is bigger than what we just promised is r p plus p q plus 1 plus r p plus 1 q. Now take any vertex v in the vertex set and consider the neighbors of v. So how does the graph look like? So here you have the graph g, here you have a vertex v. Now there are some neighbors of v, right? So these are the vertices that have some edge to v. And then there are some vertices here that don't have any edge to v. So there are some vertices here and some vertices here. Vertices that are neighbors of v and vertices that are non-neighbors of v. So we call the vertices of v kv. We call it k because it's like the known. V knows this set of people. Remember that this graph is just a mathematical representation of the problem. And we will call the other one as NV. Right? So the set of neighbors of V is called KV, and the set of neighbors, uh, vertices that are not neighbors of V are called NV. Now, given the fact that this n is bigger than or equal to this, we have two cases. First of all, either kv is greater than or equal to r p q plus 1 or nv is greater than or equal to p plus 1 comma q. Now, why are these two the only two cases? So, to prove that these two are the only two cases, what we have to say is that if neither of the case holds, then something wrong is happening. So what happens if the first case doesn't hold? If the first case doesn't hold, then kv is strictly less than r p q plus 1, which means it is less than or equal to this minus 1. Similarly, nv is less than or equal to r p plus 1 comma q minus 1. Now what is the size of the vertices, vertex set? So this was of course n which we started with and this is if you recall it is the neighbors of v plus the vertices which are not neighbors of v plus the vertex itself which is 1 which is less than this plus this which is r p q plus 1 plus r p plus 1 q minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2 and then this plus 1 so I get minus 1. So, the in, so if neither of this case, case 1 and case 2 hold then the number of vertices is less than this plus this minus 1 or in other words this is strictly less than so n is strictly less than this plus this which is unfortunately not contradicting sorry, which is unfortunately contradicting this fact assumption that n is greater than or equal to so if case 1 and case 2 doesn't hold we get a contradiction and hence it cannot be that neither case 1 nor case 2 hold so either case 1 hold or case 2 hold or maybe both holds but both of them cannot hold is not an option Thus, we get that we have get these two cases, namely kv is greater than or equal to r p q plus 1 and nv is greater than or equal to r p plus 1 q. And what do we have to prove? If we can prove that in either case, either we have a clique of size 
p plus 1 or an independent set of size q plus 1, then what we have proved that we started with a graph g with n greater than this one and we have proved that the graph either has a click of size p plus 1 or an independent set of size q plus 1. And this is exactly what we want to prove in the first place. Right? So we will go by proving it case by case. So to start with, let's start with the first case, namely kv is greater than r p q plus 1. Now let's look at what's going on before I start with the explanation. So here is the graph. Here was the set of kv. Here is the set of nv. And here is the vertex. Now every vertex in kv is attached to this vertex v. Right? Now, this kv is bigger than this rpq plus 1. What does it mean? If I look at just this graph, just the graph on kv, then we have these two options. This one, either kv has an independent set of q plus, q minus 1, that's what this definition of rpq plus 1 means, right? Since r kv is greater than rpq plus 1, either there is an independent set of size q plus 1 sitting inside kv. In that case, that independent set is also an independent set of size q plus 1 there, right? For example, if this is an independent set here, that means no two vertex here has an edge between them, then the whole graph G, the whole graph G, I still don't have any edge between them and hence I get the same set of vertices is an independent set of size Q plus 1 in G. Now, the definition that Kv is greater than this and the definition of Rp q plus 1 is either it has an independent set of size q plus 1 or it has a click of size p. Now what happens if it has a click of size p? Let's think of this blue thing again as a click of size p. That means between any two edge here, vertex here, there is an edge. Now if this is a size p set, consider this set and this vertex V, then this blue set plus this vertex V, we get a set of size P plus 1 and it is a click between because first of all any two vertex in this click has an edge and since all the vertices is subset of KV which are neighbors of V, so between V and any other vertex there is a click of size, there is a click. So it is an edge, which means that this vertex along with this vertex V gives me a click of size P plus 1. So either G has an independent set of size Q plus 1 or a click of size P plus 1. Now in the case 2, we have a similar argument except that now we will look at the nv setting. So the case 2, the nv is bigger than rp plus 1q. And this time, again, look at the induced graph on nv. Now since nv is bigger than rp plus 1q, so by definition, two things hold. Either this, so this will be KNV, either this NV has a click of size P plus 1, so either it already has a click of size P plus 1, it's a click here. In that case, this whole thing is still a click of size P plus 1 in the original graph. And if not, 
The other thing is that the NV has a independent set of size Q. Now, if it is an independent set, so if the blue thing is an independent set, what it means is that between any two vertex in this blue thing there is no edge. But then again, consider this blue with this V. And then we get this, this thing plus V gives an independent set of size V G plus 1. This is because th this set now is completely contained inside NV, which by definition are the edges from which there is no vertex to fit. Correct? So in that case also, there is no edge. And so in this case also we either get an independent set of types q plus 1 or a click of size p plus 1. So thus thus we started with this graph g which has number of edges was greater than or equal to R P Q plus 1 plus R P plus 1 Q. We looked at, picked up any vertex in V, looked at the neighbors and the non-neighbors. We had two cases and we proved that in either case, either there is a click of size P plus 1 or a independent set of size Q plus 1. And hence, we have been able to prove the Ramsey theorem. I mean, we ended up proving this recurrence relation. The fact that this thing follows from the recurrence relation, we did it a couple of videos earlier, actually, a couple of weeks earlier. So, again, we have seen how graph theory can be used to model a problem, visualize it correctly and we solve it using solving, um, use graph theory to solve the problem. In the next video, we will be looking at graph theory. We will start looking at graph theory as itself and try to see how various properties of graph theory can be proved. So we will start looking at some properties of graphs. Thank you.